Hello and welcome to the Sheer Luck Show. I'm Nana Champong and we have a really fab show for you today. Lou takes us through the wardrobe of Lucy Williams for the second in the Style Insider series. Plus, we take a look at what went on behind the scenes at the fashion team's spring editorial shoot. There are some amazing looks. But first, let me introduce our wonderful guests. I'm joined by founder of AD Created and former global entertainment director at British Vogue, Deborah Bio. Plus, podcast host and author, Josh Smith, and writer and brand consultant, Billy Battier. Welcome to the sofa, guys. Nice yes. so I've fun. basically just got all of my friends on the sofa. <laughs> which I mean, why not? Bring your friends to work today. Exactly. Love Bring it. your friends to work today. It's absolutely fantastic. First chat, Josh, you yes. have written a book. It is Thanks, out. <laughs> <laughs> it is out on June the 20th. Yeah. It's called Great Chat. Yeah. Please, can you tell us about it? Well, it was born out of this idea that I think in our society today, we've lost the art of conversation and we are more connected than we've ever been in our entire lives, in our entire history, right? You've got your phones, you can pick them up, you can mm. talk to every single person in your life. Yeah. But statistically, we are lonelier mm. as a society across every single generation. And the way to overcome that is to get down, have some amazing conversations with amazing people in your life, new people in your life. Mm. And that's where Great Chat comes in. Oh, it's love the cover. So, thanks, it's babe. So I really appreciate yes. it. Okay. The final fi finished version will have like silver foil on it. It's going to be stunning. Get ready. <laughs> and it's seven lessons for better conversations, deeper connections, and improved well being. And it's seven lessons which uses all the amazing advice that I've learned, tips and tricks I've learned from interviewing hundreds of celebrities over a decade now, which yeah. is crazy when I actually said it out loud, <laughs> alongside amazing research too. Yeah. And it helps you deal with everything from how to embrace difficult conversations, which we know are like one of the worst yeah. things to have to do in yeah. our yeah. lives, oh, yeah. we all hate how that. to ask better Absolutely. questions, yeah. how to become an active listener because our listening skills have completely left the building. Our attention spans. <laughs> our attention yeah. spans have gone. <laughs> Three and seconds, TikTok. Three seconds, <laughs> gone. Yeah, if that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so important, and I really hope this book will help so many people because mm. whether you are socially anxious, whether you are looking to win people over at work, whether you're dating in the Wild West, <laughs> that is the digital world, <laughs> Come on, that Amen. is really Amen. hard. Amen to that. There's tips and tricks in there for everyone. And it's yeah. basically a self-help book that really starts to use conversation as a self-help yeah. practice. Amazing. Amazing. So obviously on the subject of the book, I'd like to come to you, Deborah. What do you think the art of great conversation is? Do you have any tips, advice? Yes, I mean, for me, um, my job is mostly networking. So you yeah. have to be a good conversationalist. But... Uh, my advice and tips would be to start with entering a room, scanning the room, mm. and then pivoting to someone who has something interesting that you can say, like, Nana, I approach you. Those earrings are really fabulous. Mm. That's nice. a compliment. Starting <laughs> with a compliment yeah. and then easing your way in instead of, like, hi, my name is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? So for me, that would be my top tip, to yeah. start with a compliment. Amazing. Billy? Well, I feel really lucky that, like, because we've been friends for such a long time, We've had such great chat over yeah. the years. And Josh is really the person that I like lean on for those conversations because you are so good at it and you have really taught me how to be better. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. Oh, that is so true. Like, so true. And I, I There's an it. art to it. You're so yeah, right. It's yeah. art to there, it. is, there is categorically no one who does it better. Yeah. You are the best at it. And I remember not that long ago, we went and played squash on Saturday. Yeah. And my parents were visiting that weekend, Aww. and you were telling my mum and dad about the book, and you would, you were, we'd got to the bit about active listening, and my dad is the worst active. Listener. <laughs> he, is a, he is a complete like oh. narcissist in conversation. Like, you say a thing, let me tell you about a thing that happened to me that's unrelated to that, but I'm going to make it related to that. Oh and gosh. I think that that is one thing I've really taken away from it. I. I have learned. I have learnt, and it's a difficult thing to do. I think because mm. we're intrinsically thinking about ourselves in conversation, mm -hmm. we're self-conscious mm -hmm. in conversation. But what I've tried to do is think harder about the active listening and that has helped me have much deeper, much better, much mm -hmm. more like beneficial conversations to mm -hmm. both parties where I've been like, okay, I'm not just I'm not just kind of listening to what you're saying and thinking yeah. about what I'm gonna say next. Like I'm really listening to what you're saying because what you're saying is just as important as what I've got yeah. to say. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Listening. No, that would be, I think listening for me mm. is definitely the key 
of having a great conversation yeah. because it needs to go both ways. Mm. Yeah. And also be yourself. I yeah. think yeah. there's so many times mm. when I talk about conversations, people are like, you need to be the most articulate person oh. in the whole room. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, absolutely yeah. don't. No, no. You just got to have the faith in yourself. Everyone's got the power within them to have great chats. Yeah. You've yeah. just got to put yourself out there and the one thing that helps you bond is being authentic. Yeah. yeah. It's all about going Knowing to talk you to about chicken yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, just before this, we were talking about pasta, which yeah. is, you know, yeah. all the hot topics. What, what but, pasta shape yeah. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Or would so you be? Those sort of things help you bond. Yeah. Just but, put yourself forward. But saying forward. that, people do find it, you know, being yourself is so much easier to say be yourself, mm. but sometimes you do enter a space where you try to have a conversation, you want to be yourself, but either it hasn't worked for you in the past, yeah. and then you're, yeah. so I feel like it's, you it's a bit anxious it's, yeah, you come a bit about anxious it. about yeah. it, and you overthink, I'm an overthinker, yeah. so I, I do understand that, but it, it, it really is, you yeah. have to try and push through and be but yourself. How do you get out of like, overthinking oh, a situation? Now you're putting me on the spot, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. It, it, you, you just have to kind of go through it and just really mm. remember to be yourself. Remember that you are in that room or you are having that conversation mm. with yeah. that person. You deserve so to be in that room. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. two-way everyone. street yeah. and everyone that's there. And also, it's if you, you know, it's just literally, if it doesn't work, try again. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. practice. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And that's what I say in the book. It is like a self-help practice. Okay. You have to do little things every day. <laughs> great chat, guys. Great, great chat. Thank you so much. I love that. Now, take a look at the next instalment of our Style Insider series. Lou Hoff has spent a very enjoyable day with the OG influencer and tastemaker, the extremely stylish and very lovely Lucy Williams. Everything is literally to die for. Hello and welcome back to our second episode of Style Insider. Today I am joined by Lucy Williams, digital creator, stylist and the OG influencer. And we are so excited to be here today to chat all things style and have a rummage through your wardrobe. Yeah, I think rummage is the right word. It is quite packed. Okay, we there. love that. <laughs> we love that. Whose wardrobes are packed? Yeah. So tell me firstly your style. How would you describe it? I never really knew how to answer this question until Alison Bornstein came to the rescue and we were like, let's try and do this three words yeah. thing. I think comfortable. Yeah. 90s is one of mine, and then effortless was my like aspirational yeah. word. In your world, you must see so many different styles and products and trends come and grow. And it's, yeah. I guess, kind of your job to show those, like, do you feel like you try things out all the time? I think I'm a lot more restrained now in that when I was sort of much younger, I think I was much more trend orientated, okay. but I think I'm much better now at being like, that's great, but it's just not, it's just not for me. Okay. So I'm a bit more picky and choosy now. Yeah. Um, Who or what has the biggest inspiration on your style? I sort of came of age when Sienna Miller was in her boho oh, era. Yeah. So I think that was definitely like a big thing. So when I was growing up, I'm 10 years younger than my sisters. Okay. So in the 90s, they were doing that whole kind of like grungy 90s thing and like big bomber jackets and grandpa shirts. Yeah. So I think that kind of sort of the 90s supermodel era yeah. is sort of yeah, and that's had like a me. huge impact yeah, on Yeah, like you. high-waisted Levi's and sort yeah. of tight t-shirts and stuff like that, I don't yeah. know. Okay, let's talk brands. Yeah. Who are your go-tos? I feel like in a dream world, I do love the row. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? I love the row. It's definitely not a pillar of my wardrobe just yet, but I do think they do things really, really yeah, well. Yeah, they do. Totem I love, Kate I love. Not necessarily even shopping from them, but just in terms of like aesthetics. Yeah. Do you think you have a shopping motto? I think once upon a time, my motto probably used to be, you know, if you like it, wear it in the sense of like don't overthink it yeah don't question if it's cool or if other people are going to like it just wear it if you love it i think now i'm probably actually a bit more restrained than that i'm probably okay. more like yeah you love it but is it going to work with everything else you've got going on yeah. and <laughs> do you have a kind of an outfit formula that you like fall back on for me jeans t-shirt really good leather jacket and boots or trainers feels very me yeah but I also love, I'm a real, like, I'm probably a child of the noughties. Like, I love a jeans and a nice top. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> like, like high-waisted Levi's with some quite cool top. With, like, talking about denim, obviously, like, 
the trends of denim has changed yeah. a lot. Like I remember when I was like, I will only ever wear a skinny. Yeah. I don't like, know how God to wear forbid. skinny jeans anymore. Oh, imagine. Like I don't know how to wear skinny. I don't know what I would wear them with. I feel like actually, if skinny jeans come back, <laughs> we will play that by ear. <laughs> we'll be but back to do. I was <laughs> really relieved to not have the skinny jeans anymore. And what about dressing up something kind of smarter when yeah. kind of you're in your denim? What what's your kind of go to? That's where I probably get a little bit more kind of playful okay. with stuff. Um, so if you're going to a wedding, yeah, wedding. What kind of thing would you wear? There is honestly no formula. Just like a great dress, some shoes. Yeah. And what is the most treasured item in your wardrobe? Would you say? I got this amazing vintage Roberto Cavalli sort of silk blouse top. Yeah. If I'm struggling to know what to wear to like a nice dinner or something, yeah. wearing that with jeans and slick back hair and earrings, I'm like. Okay, I feel good. Yeah. And I've got another little body kind of full beaded sort of it's like open sided tunicky top. Ooh. I almost think sometimes the more sort of eclectic something is, the more timeless it can be. Yeah, I get that. What about the oldest piece? Have you got anything that you've oldest had for? Piece. I have got this pair of tiny like Daisy Duke denim <laughs> cutoffs that yeah. have literally gone and came everywhere with me for about a decade. And they were like the dream shorts, but I am at I'm at that oh, point no, now. No, I don't think you can get rid of I, them. No, I think I need to retire the Daisy Dukes. Really? Yeah, I think I'm more in my Bermuda era. Okay, fine. Now, have you had any kind of style disasters where you look back at looks and you think? I have so many style really? disasters. Oh my god! I used to love a fedora. I used I love to love a fedora. The no, no, honestly, oh, no. I love them. No, I mean, maybe like in on like a holiday, in like an Aaron straw, Watson way. In an Aaron, that yeah. was my, that was my dream. That, yeah. That's my dream girl yeah. from back in the day. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else. I mean, honestly, so many. I have, I can remember going to work um, it, when I was working at a magazine years ago and wearing like these tiny, like they were almost like negligee silk sort of shorts okay. with over the knee socks and brogues. Oh, wow. Do you know a trend I saw that's coming back is the trousers and the skirt over the top? That I cannot. No, I know, like the leg, like people are doing leggings with I stuff over the top. That. I can't do that either. Pedal pushers as well. Yeah. Not, not my vibes. And what about travel? I know like that's yeah. been, he has been a huge influence for you. Yeah. How does your kind of your travel wardrobe, how does like the places you go to, how does that influence your style? Yeah, I think I've got too much of a sort of strong imagination. So okay. like when I'm kind of like planning where I'm going, I definitely have a sort of vision. Okay. So you're going to Greece, like yeah. what, what's on the packing list? So Greece to me is a bit more barefoot, so it's a little a little bit yeah. more carefree. Yeah, lots of like sarongs wrapped into little mini skirts. Yeah. Lots of kind of layered necklaces with like beads and leather nice. cords. Nice. Lots of open shirts. So spring, summer then, what is on your wish list for this season? I'm obsessed with the Mew Mew show. Yeah. Actually obsessed with the slightly like orthopedic sort of sandals. Okay. They're like very like, they're like the barefoot. Yeah, yeah, I know the ones means. I love those. Yeah. With a the boat sort of shoe, would you? I can I've see got the a boat, boat shoe. shoe. Love it. Got the boat shoe. I've seen this amazing Marnie sort of big tote beachy bag. Yeah. I just discovered this amazing brand called Comsi. Okay. Have you heard of them? No. You would love them. All like really elevated um, cotton and silk sort of boxers Ooh, and trousers. Nice. In London, where are your, like, where do you go? Is it vintage? Are there department stores you love? I think in London, if I was going to shop sort of in real life <laughs> rather than online it's probably mostly vintage okay. that's the stuff that i like make a pilgrimage to yeah. as such and mm. when you're shopping vintage are you looking for something specific or are you just kind of no beeline just, for just, whatever no fancy? just browsing yeah well should we have let's have a, a look rummage. i'm just going to warn you i'm not a very tidy okay love that <laughs> what do you mean, i'm not this a color tidy this no i'm tidy. not a color coordinated lovely everything in order person okay. i really try and it just doesn't happen okay, well so. i'll show you a couple of the bits that i mentioned this is my like Bodhi. Oh, I love that. Top. Oh, I love that. Mm, that's really fun. It's really nice over like linen trousers in the summer. Yeah. And how Black silky trousers. And you'd wear that to a wedding. You'd wear that casually. I would wear that to a wedding actually. And then that one's the um, Roberto Cavalli oh, I love that. vintage blouse that I love. And it's really nice at the, because it's got this kind of sheer like higher back. Yeah. I don't know. Such it's just a beautiful it's shape. such a perfect find. Oh okay. well, yeah, that's the double J. It's this is really amazing. badly hung. Charlotte's got this. Yeah. I don't know, I quite like the idea of wearing feathers in the summer. Because yeah. I always think of feathers as quite a Christmassy thing. No, I love that. But yeah. That's vintage Gucci. Wow. <gasps> That's amazing. I feel like you like a, like a waistcoat or a kind of vesty. Yeah, I'm mean, more into my like long liney waistcoats. Yeah. I'm not so into matching. Yeah. But I like a. Love that. Yeah. 
Where Any of your favourite knitwear? That's an Almada, which is amazing. I love that. Oh, wait, this is one of my favourites as well, which actually, do you know what? I haven't worn enough, but SS oh, Daily. Love that. Little duck. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God, my daughter would I know. die it is quite, over that. It is quite toddler vibes. Love but, it. But um, I think... Oh, it's nice and thick as well. It is thick. Love and that. And actually, I don't know, I just thought, I just love it. It's very cool. I mean, uh, Susie Condy. <gasps> love that. It's so cozy. <gasps> and then this one's really... Oh, this is that. the interior one. Oh, that's amazing. And how would you wear that? I literally was wearing this so much around Christmas for like nice dinners because yeah. it's really cozy and comfy. And that I just wear one? over a long sleeve white top. Yeah. Or in the summer, maybe like over a little, just a tank. So it's just sleeveless. Dream. And what about dresses? Dresses. I love a kind of classic sort of slip dress. Love that. Very nice. This one's, I've had this for ages. This is Theory. Oh, wow. Love um, that shape. But the back's really nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is like a newer slip dress that I actually haven't... Well, would we call this a slip dress? Yeah. Sort of. But it's got a little bit more kind of ruching and shape that's to gorgeous. it. That's gorgeous. Love so that shape So you kind of tie there. that around there. And then I quite like a sort of sassy mini dress sometimes as well. Cute. That's another acne one. All good shoulder pads. Alessandra Risch. Wow, that's amazing. This is from the Doen Heirloom collection. I love that. Which I just love. Weirdly, it is technically sheer, but you really, it actually just really isn't that sheer on. And I just love it. And good colours in that. And I do get the sort of heirloom one. thing. You know, it's one of those things that you do just want to keep. Talk oh, this is quite, this is, oh, I wore this to one of my Missima dinners with some quite like big black undies yeah. underneath. It worked really well. I love that. It and was really cool. There, that's incredible. That whole like sheer thing. I can't remember if that's the back or the front. I mean, you okay. can do whatever you want. Um, leathers. Oh yeah, that's another leather, leather collection. Yes. Okay, again, bear with the mess. My Topshop one is no more because I literally wore it to death. That's Ooh, so soft. Coach, but it's really, yeah, it's a goodie. Yeah, I love that. So that's what, an old classic. What kind of shape? Like, obviously, there's surplus here. Like, when you're looking for a new one, what, what are you drawn to? At the moment, I'm definitely more drawn to a big one. Okay. I feel like this, this is, is the dream one. Where's this one from? This is Isabel Morant. 70% off. What? I was chuffed with that one. The Mackage one is my <clears throat> probably my other fave. I also think it's just going to get better with age. Yeah, definitely. So, that I love. Love that. I got this on Vinted recently, <gasps> and I just think this actually with a vintage t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, so that's such a good colour on you. It's quite fun. Yeah, quite I love fun that. for spring. Quite maybe a bit more sixties than my normal. Yeah. But we, we can make it work. Love that. Which I actually, love that shade. The amount of comments I get from mostly men about like looking like I'm from Greece <laughs> is quite boring. Like, I actually think this would be so cool with like big red jeans this yeah, summer. Yeah, I love that. I love this as well. I can't wait to wear this again. It's like a Wales Bonner satin um, Ooh, that's jacket. Beautiful. I'll wear that probably over slightly boxy t-shirts, yeah. blue denim, flip-flops. Love it. You know, like really simple. Okay. I'm quite like, so I love a statement piece, but I don't like okay, the, the whole look to yeah. be like, Wild. Okay. So, I love, this is oh, Nanushka, but it's so it's very oh my like. Oh that is so thick. Yeah, it's really and thick. Padded. It's really good for like you know in in the winter when you want to wear leather. Yeah. But it's too cold yeah, yeah, to wear yeah. a leather jacket. Accessories. Show me. Are this way. So this is like <gasps> my little like shoe. treasure trove. Boots, bags. Wow. Actually, lots of quite sassy bags in here. Ooh, love. I have a bit of a Fendi baguette thing. Little Gucci bamboo. What would be your top five bags, bags ever? Ever. Oh God. Actually, one of them is not in here. Okay. One of them is here. But this little Kate one, I've got so much wear out of that one. So cute. I've worn that so okay, much. That's one. That Jill Sander bag yeah, for summer that. holidays. I've worn that so much. So cute. This little vintage Balenciaga one. Oh, I love that. What you like I actually most? love this one. Yeah, I love that. Because I think it actually goes with so much. Yeah. If you're wearing something quite neutral, I love this green. Yeah. That's Little Lifner. Little Lifner is one of my favourite. Yeah, they're so good, aren't they? <laughs> that, is, that is so 90s. Yeah, it really I is. I love that. This is my old bag. This is the first, I think one of, this is the first ever designer bag that I bought second hand. Gucci. Yeah. Is, I love it and I'm not going to get rid of it, but I... I'm, I will, I'm not wearing it right at the moment. No, no, but sometimes there are pieces that you can but, kind of put on reserve. Okay, what about shoes? 
I just got these, which I'm excited to wear. Quite a lot of green. I love through the wardrobe. I know. I, love I do that. like a bit of jewelly green. Yeah. Such Actually, my comfiest shoes. shoes that I wear for like every wedding and party are these. Love them. <laughs> Sulia Martinez, Spanish brand, and they're so comfy. And I don't know, I just love how like disco and yeah, amazing. fun they are. So if you're going on holiday, yes. what shoes would you be taking with you? Oh, so these are J. Crew, and I've worn, I think these are so good. They're yeah, great. I wear those so much. St. Agony. So these are from my ancient Greek collection last year. I just love the cork. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> What did you wear for your wedding? I wore Jimmy Choo's for my wedding, for my actual wedding, but then I did wear, these were my like dancing Love shoes. Those. I kind of, yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I actually did wear those and then they kept falling off, so then I just whacked those on. They Which are... didn't really go as well, but at that point I didn't really care. And they've got all the crystals, <laughs> they are amazing. You know, it's when I look at all this stuff, like when I, like all the more like zany stuff. Yeah. But I would wear that, like I would wear these with jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah and then just hoops and not much else. Speaking of jewellery, yes. you are obviously the poster girl for Miss Ma. <laughs> um, any favourite pieces from your collection? I'm always going to have a soft spot for the waffles Love because we Love based these. those on a pair of my mum's from Aww. the 80s and the double sort of entwined chunky gold and silver. They're amazing. These are like my favourite, one of my, some of my favourite earrings of all time. But those are literally like, if I ever feel like I just need to wear like something super basic, yeah. but look quite dressy, I just shove those in. Amazing. Got this from Cos. We I mean, it does like look a bit simple. like a nipple, but I think, <laughs> I think we can make it work. I think it works for you. <laughs> I feel like we could have chatted for hours and hours about everything style. Yeah, you have 100%. massively inspired me and made me question my wardrobe choices. So I loved it. Thank you so much. No, I need some more loo chicness in my <laughs> life. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, what a wardrobe and what a woman. She is such a vibe. I loved everything. I would literally kill for that green Fendi. Did you love that guy? Loved it. So good. She's just so chic. She's I know, good. isn't she? she so <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, big standing of Lucy I need Williams, that yeah. like, over here. But more fashion to talk about. Last week, I wrote an article for the site about how to make the high street look expensive. My number one hack is buying into premium collections that kind of the high street shops have done. You're the queen what? of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. So what would your advice be for looking expensive but on a budget? Wow. I'm ready. Go, go, go. go Billy, okay. you first. So, one is iron your clothes. <laughs> oh my God. No, this is, is absolutely good. That is such a good tip. tip. It is. is. A iron your t shirts. Yeah. If you want to feel elevated, like you do have to put some effort into it. I hate a crease. Absolutely. I literally travel with my steamer at yeah. all, all times. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got it. That and, and mango from prep. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> You have to like, you, you have to still take care of your yeah. clothes that you think are like more throwaway. They're not throwaway. They're mm. like really key pieces in your wardrobe. I love the high street. I shop the high street regularly, but like get some starch spray, spray that white t-shirt, iron it and it will look v nice. expensive. Mm. And I also think, don't forget the rest of your look in, the, in when you're trying to like elevate yourself. I've got really curly hair and sometimes I think that looks really like messy and not refined. And if I want to like just feel a bit more elevated, I'm like, right, I'm going to do something with it. I'm mm. going to blow dry it or I'm going to straighten it or I'm going to, mm. I just make it look a bit more done. Yeah. So if the rest of you is done, the clothes are just an, they're just an added bonus. Yeah. I love that. That is a really, hey. yeah, that's a really love great Love that. It's so, so good to get my eye out. <laughs> <out. laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do look there. There's not a crease on that. This suit, is literally so. just come fresh from the dry cleaners, okay. so that's why I've already got a stain on it. So, <laughs> so I'm not looking as expensive. But I would say my tip would be is to find Exhibit A tailoring, yeah. right, on yes. the high street. You can yes. really find great tailoring on the high street. Even though someone the other day on YouTube wrote a comment saying I look like um, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> She is Niche. a powerful woman, I tell you. But she is a, a powerful woman. And I was like, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Yeah. You're trying to shade me about my high street tailoring. <laughs> yeah, but actually. But yeah. actually. She wears a suit wow. She wears a suit she, she well. Really yeah. She's the queen of the power suit. Exactly. No, what's, not, what's not to love? Um, but I do think that's a great tip. If you can find really amazing tailoring on the high street, put that into your wardrobe, use it as a basis to build everything else around, mm. you'll be looking slick. Yeah. Also, you can tweak your pieces from the high street. Like, mm. I got a great blazer from ASOS. I took the shoulder pads out because it was just too big on me. Yeah. And now it looks 
it looks more expensive yeah. on me. You can nip stuff in. Yeah. Like that was one of the tips I wrote about, like get to know your tailor, yeah. whether that's mm. in your local dry cleaners, wherever tailors mm. hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who does really great alterations? Sojo, the pop-up that's in Selfridges. Like I've actually used them before and it's a really, really great service. This dress, for example, I had taken in and I think it's anthropology. Straight away I'm like, great, looks it gives it a little bit more. Well, it's, yeah. like it's cut for you, which exactly. people presume is a, an expensive piece of clothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but if it's fitted, yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I mean, for we... me, I'll say accessories. I love to accessorize, and yeah. I feel like. Well, I'm going to cheat. I think it's a heel, sunglasses and accessories. Yeah. I think you can have a plain, like today I've got a t-shirt and jeans, put this lovely blazer on and accessorise. Yeah. And baby look at got, <laughs> like, <laughs> My glasses, whether rain or shine, <laughs> right. I've always got sunglasses. It's like, yeah. I feel like yeah. it's, um, um, when you don't want to wear makeup, you can just put sunglasses oh on gosh, and it yeah. really just elevates everything. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Sunglasses. Every, everything. Yeah. Everything. I've, 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 looking a mess. I've yeah. literally, to looking without... Shit. An I, slab. I can go. I can literally go a weekend, weekend away, and I've got twenty pairs of sunglasses I love with that. me. Oh, yeah. It's like it's just the thing. It really does. What are your favourite pair? Oh God, don't do that. It's like picking a favourite child. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's too. It's too hard. Yeah. Too hard. No, I do love a good <laughs> pair of sunglasses. Um, but yeah, if you haven't read the article, check it out, guys, because there's lots of other tips in there. Gonna do it nice. straight after this, babe. <laughs> That's it. Good to know. <laughs> Next up, we take a peek behind the scenes of a bumper fashion editorial shoot. Good morning, girls. Good morning. Hi. We're outside of London. What's what's going on? We're out the city. At the mansion. This is so <laughs> exciting. So we are doing our first big fashion editorial of the year. Um, we're focusing on the key spring summer trends. We've got some amazing products and we are shooting in the most incredible location house at Clifton <laughs> House. <laughs> And it's so amazing! It is literally... Oh, oh here we go. just in time. Church time! <laughs> just in time. Yeah, and the weather has really pulled out for yeah, us. Although apparently day. it's going to rain this afternoon, so we're going to try and get everything. We're basically uh, going to try and get ready ASAP to shoot as much as possible outside and then focus on the inside in the afternoon. Yeah, th this is National Trust um, building, so there's the most amazing grounds and gardens which you can come to um, and look around. So unfortunately we can't shoot outside. Um, in the gardens, but they are so stunning. The flowers are mm. unbelievable. Cool. Exciting. Cool, let's go shoot. Cool. Yeah. This feels like one of those Disney tours, you know? <laughs> oh my god, that's so mega. Wow. Wow. Oh my yeah. god. But is it popular as a. We can do one more with this sort of like you know, over the garden. Yeah. And then we can do one here. focus yeah. more. The light in there is beautiful. So I think if we do smash the two outside just yeah. here and then we can, I don't know if there's yeah. one elite. Yeah. Two in particular, two in You know, when we talk romance, she mm. translates romance when it's more structured. She translates structured, mm. decent when it's more playful. So like, I, I, I feel Through like every look, look needs yeah. an identity, yeah. if that makes sense. What's for breakfast, Vanessa? What have we got? Well. I already sampled the pain chocolat. They're tiny, so I feel like you can eat more than one. And then we've got some croissants, we've got some and a fruit bowl. Some fruit. That's also, the pears have been popular. Unusual fruit to be popular, but you know. So when I grabbed one, I was using this. Oh my God. I don't know whether you had a like, go with it. It's a bit ridiculous. It's, it feels like it's a quite a hard <laughs> time. Like, no. You know that, that game you played as a kid where, the, where you had to operate, operate like operate, a patient? Yeah. Oh wait. <gasps> yeah. There it is. <laughs> Right, Should we get we? out there and do a quick hair and makeup test, and then we can do yeah, yeah. any We're going to start with which Sasha is wearing this amazing. Who's Sasha? Uh, <laughs> this is Sasha on model. This amazing Marcus Almeida dress, fitted jersey top, and then this like gorgeous bull skirt, which is just such an amazing silhouette. Obviously, she looks amazing. I feel like it goes very well with the setting of yeah, the house yeah, as well. Yeah, it kind yeah, of fits yeah. nicely. <laughs> Get in the contact, Henry. Get in the shot. Get in the shot. I'm just worried I might just see you. No, no, I'm a crop, I mean. Well, what about just some 
nice kind of big straw. On a, on a Tuesday afternoon. Oh, what a dream. Lovely I, walk. I, I want to ask, I was like, so what did you do in life to get you here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's lovely, really nice. That's beautiful, Sasha. Bouncy, yeah. Nice and nice and soft. Big. Yeah. Out of ten. Mm, it's a good night. I'd give it yeah eight and a half. Do you have any? Mm. Oh, yeah, I think like as a wide, yeah. just getting like the silhouette, I think yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. That to really just show that yeah. shape and the scale. But, um, can you show us a quick run through on the clothes we're wearing sure. today and the, the outfits? So we're doing basically all the new season trends. So it's really like, there's so many amazing like silhouettes and like really just gorgeous shapes and colors. This is one of the looks, which I love. It's this Attico suit. It's like really like 90s tailoring, which is a really massive trend. Spring leather, that's also huge. So I've got this amazing rotate cream jacket, which I'm gonna style with these- Some shorts. Frankie Sharp shorts, like shorts are huge this season. Very cool. Crochet, which is also massive, massive trend. So we've got this amazing fringed two piece, this skirt from Magda Bertram and this gorgeous top. Okay, perfect. Thank you. She can't resist. She's got it. Just test them before. The Just test them. Just guys, come on. Come on. Get out focus, of focus. Like She's got a plate. She's got a plate. I've got a plate. Go on, go on then, I'll try one. Of You've started something now, Lou. The plates are coming Such out. Such a good idea. Take away Rachel. Sasha, how's the heels? The heels on the stones. How's that? You're managing well. You're managing well. Oh guys, it's like so, so amazing. Yeah. That seemed very successful, guys. Yeah, amazing. It's looking it's so good. We're three shots down. We've got some hot chips, which are maybe not so hot. That's, you're still thinking about the chips, Luke. <laughs> yeah. I'm asking you about the shoot here. Focus, focus. It's, focus. Just, it's looking amazing. This could be my favorite outfit so far. Really? Yeah, I think so. Just so stunning, elegant. This is modern femininity. And we love this phrase at Sherlux, but if Sherlux made outfits, <laughs> I think this would pretty much be up there. This is great. I wonder if we're trying to like, move forward and backward a little bit together. What's up, camera? Yeah. Great. And then just your body a little bit towards me. With that. I think that was really cool. Really yeah. Like yeah. Should we try that? It's just the final look, guys. This is it. That's final look. It. Final count. So I'm gonna look like, yeah, yeah, like so you kind of move your coat as you're walking a bit, yeah. you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well done, everyone. End of the day. All wrapped. No, <laughs> happy? Yeah, really happy. It's been a long day and the weather's been sunny, rainy, all over the place, but we've got some but amazing shots. we have to say, because it, it said it was going to rain all day, so having the we sun in the morning lucky. was so lucky. But looking at the mood board, it's like really so exciting. exciting. Yeah. Cool. I can't wait to see it in the lane. Ellie did a great job. Thank you, Ellie. Hello. Thank you for today. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. Cheers. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Wow, what a mega shoe. I just loved that full bodied skirt look. Some really stunning pieces there, weren't there, guys? That yeah, was. Really loved, really loved. Really really now, good. yesterday actually occurred to me that all three of you at some point have stepped away from your full time jobs mm. to do something on your own, yes. which is massive. Yes. Do you have any advice and tips as to what it takes to do that? You guys are veterans in, in the game. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm, I'm four weeks in. Yes. <laughs> um, oh God, tips and advice. I would say it's a bold choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not for everyone, you know, to, to quit your job. Um, but I was lucky enough and blessed enough to be able to do that. It, basically, I was turning 40, a new decade, and I've been wanting to do it for some time. Mm -hmm. And I've been um, being approached a few times and I thought, why not? Yeah. So it was just a let go, let God kind of thing for me. <laughs> and I would say betting on myself has really paid off. It's been mm. so rewarding to be able to um, kind of really pivot and, 
enter into spaces that I never thought was even possible for me yeah. to, to reach or to be connected with people that are interested in what I'm doing. And yeah. it's, yeah, I'm really excited for the year ahead. It's yeah. so, 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 so good. good. And what you were saying earlier as well about networking. Yes. I think that's yes. a really good tip for people. No, if you do want to do something on your own, have a network around you absolutely. that will really yes. help. But mm -hmm. also knowing that you have to put yourself out there. They don't come to you. Mm -hmm. You also have to try. You can't always think you know oh my god like it's people, gonna come to it's gonna you. come to no. you we, you know like coming from the um, vogue background i was very much like oh what if they what if what if? it's like you can do the what ifs it's like just go out there yeah and you know reach out and you never know you really really never know who would come back it's, it will surprise you yeah and it's really really rewarding oh, mm. amazing i love that josh how about you you've been doing it for how long now three years okay. so i am kind nice. of a veteran right yeah oh. um I would say, and I'm still fearful of this, I'm still working through it, but mm -hmm. I had been very fearful of failure on that journey. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first was gonna leave, I was like, what happens if this is not gonna work out? And I remember saying to my yeah. boss at the time, Deborah, I was like, what's gonna, ha what's gonna happen if it this doesn't work It wasn't me, out? guys. Was no, no, no. <laughs> Another Deborah. <laughs> Different Deborah. And she said to me, Josh, none of this will be a failure. You taking this leap mm -hmm. in itself yeah. is a success. Exactly. And I really kept that with me. And when I was first recording the podcast, I had the amazing Katarina Johnson Thompson come on mm -hmm. and she said this piece of advice to me which was regret will haunt you more than failure mm -hmm. and it is the, the best piece of advice I've ever been told and I keep it with me every single day because mm -hmm. there's been so many times I've not done things but I've been so fearful of failing mm -hmm. like I almost didn't write the book because I was so scared of doing it no way. like and failing yeah I was like oh what happens if it doesn't work out what happens yeah. if people think it's gonna be a failure and actually, it's been so rewarding. And the thing that would have been the failure is the regret yeah. if I hadn't have done it. Yeah. And I think that's something that people really got to take with them. Yeah. And it's hard. And I think <laughs> pretending it's easy is a yes. silly way of going yeah. about it. It's yeah. difficult, right? Yes. <laughs> but it is the most rewarding thing. Yeah. Really, really, over to you as well. How long have you been freelance Just now? over a year. Okay. Um, and it, I think you really have to understand that it's going to be up and down mm -hmm. yeah. and it's not like it's not always yeah. just up yeah and it will be at the beginning because it's new and exciting and everybody wants to see you and you're like a, a hot new <laughs> oh, commodity yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it, there will be periods where you're like the imposter syndrome kind of starts to sink in a bit like am, am I still wanted in this industry am I doing enough am I visible mm -hmm. enough am I here there and everywhere am I doing the right the bits of work. The visibility part, because sometimes you just work by yourself, right? You're, and so yeah. you build exactly. your team. Yeah. Exactly. It's you in your room or you in a cafe and you're yeah. like, does anyone know I still exist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I still here? Yeah. Am I still, yeah. am I still yeah. wanted? Yeah. And, you know? People are really important, I think, to that journey. Like, you need to push outside of your, I'm just going to stay at home and work here today. Yeah. You need to yeah. like, go into town, go into prep, mm. stay in there for a couple of hours. Like, yeah. just make yourself feel seen, yeah. part of, a, part of a, a wider team, yeah. I think, because that's the thing that I've missed the most about when about being freelance is that I don't have that like constant yeah. sounding board of a team mm -hmm. and so actually you need to find if that is a way that you work where you do need people in a capacity yeah. not like you don't need them every day but yeah. like you do need like a bit oh, yeah, no. for lunch. yeah. 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 You just need like yeah. where you get for lunch like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Being or just what did you do on the weekend like, I, I used to <laughs> kind of hate that every time on the Monday but now I'm like can someone ask me what I did yeah. on the weekend? Okay. I love a debrief. I was always like, tell me what you did on the weekend right now. I'm what did you wear? What did you wear? Give me the hot gossip. It's, it's, the, it's the funny things you miss. Like, yeah. 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 you think that I'm going to be fine. And you're like, actually, I just want yeah. Like, yeah. someone to ask me. And I think me. so many times, like, we've all worked at big brands, right? Yeah. And I think in this industry, you become like Josh from Glamour, Deborah yes. from Vogue, yeah. Billy from Stylist. Yeah. And it becomes your yeah. identity. And actually, one of the things that I've learned is your talents are so independent oh, of that brand. Mm. Your talents are your own. Yeah. No one else owns them. Yeah. Yeah. So take those talents with you, babe, and go live your best life. And yeah. own it. Own and it. own it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. That is what boosts you, I think, yeah. and what keeps you going is that mm. you're like, okay, yeah, that, that is good enough. Just, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. And you are good enough, full, full stop. stop. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're good definitely. enough, full stop. My yeah. thing is, I think anything that scares you is definitely a good thing. So yeah. obviously, going freelance or deciding you're going to start your own business is a very scary thing. Mm. But kind of what you said, sink or swim. And also, you will surprise yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Create that Absolutely. network. 
become your own cheerleader. Yeah. Mm. So I was freelance for three years, so I totally mm. understand yeah. kind of how it works and what you need to do and the graft that goes into it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the best of both worlds. Like there are yeah. pluses, do you know what I mean? There's positives Decent. and pros yeah. and cons yeah. to everything. Yeah, but um, yeah, anyone that is freelance, uh, just you are a really hard yes. worker. Yes. Like, you have to be. Wait, you have to be. The hustle's real. Have to hustle the hustle's hard. real. Yeah. You know, have a just... day off as well. So I remember the first year yes. that I was freelance, yes. I was so scared that no one was going to book me. I said yes to absolutely everything and then realised I hadn't had a day off in a year. And obviously for me, I was like, meant to I had be a holiday queen. Actually, oh, sorry, actually. No, I was meant to quit, go to Mexico <laughs> and then start my business. Yes. But I haven't. You haven't I been haven't to Mexico. Mexico yet. Soon. <laughs> the me sun is calling, babe. Me and Abish and Tequila soon. I'm going to schedule that in, but I'm, I'm so oh blessed that things are coming in. On that note, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much. And of course, thank you to Lucy and the SL team. Next week, Louise Rowe is back with more great fashion and team content. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Goodbye.